Welcome to video 8, America 4D Cube. I did upload another video 8, and uh, we got a lot of information to go here. But I'm going to make this video a little shorter and take a different route at this moment. We're going to compare some scriptures from the Bible that are coming from the words of Jesus Christ. And he is talking about this phylactery in a particular way. So if I would have known that I had this DVD, I would have used it as the introductory for the video series. So if you've seen video one through seven, this is a pretty powerful image right here now. It brings to mind a cliche saying, truth is stranger than fiction. Well, in this case, I guess that would apply. I want you to notice that uh, the individual, I think his name is Jack, I think. And if it is, that would be Jack in the box. Okay. Notice that it's a, a brightness in there. Of course, this uh, shining one, if you will. You should easily make the connection with the fallen prince and what I told you with Inky being sealed away in a cube. And of course, they're trying to loose that seal and bring him into a material body. As you should know, um, Jack and the Box, uh, Jesh and the genetics, Yar Rib, is doing the work course it's going to be destruction as you can see here this is all the rubble around where he is coming up out of it if you will and then I'd like you to notice that it's New York City in the background okay and then there's your there's your cube there's your phylactery there's your phylactery on the four head as I said, in multiple representations, all the way from an individual man to a philosophical symbolized man, and then to the world globe itself, in some ways like a model of the human head. And this is where it's gonna get pretty unique because as you should see, this is New York City, that's the location. Now, I have already given you a connection with the ceiling and the symbolic location of the third eye region, which represents the Giza necropolis. Necropolis means city of the dead. There we have those three standing pyramids. And you should understand the connection with Ezekiel chapter 19 that's describing these ancient hunters that were taught to hunt even hunting men, these great mighty hunters that should be connected to the sons of iron, the sons of the iron cross. As you should see, the connection to the iron maiden in this box, not too far away. But the sphinx is the symbolism for that ceiling of these beings after they had lived and died. They have souls. Book of Enoch declares all spirits born on earth, all terrestrial spirits born on earth shall stay on earth. Now we know that they are uh, sealed away until this time of judgment. All those that have lived and died, their spirits are stored. The pyramid location, Giza, Necropolis, is where it's happening. All right, that's the third eye region. Now, we'll talk about that more, maybe, in this video. We've already talked about it a little bit, if you've been following pretty close. But the place to see it is Ezekiel chapter 19. And then you would have to think about the connection with those lions that are being taught to hunt. And then all the imagery that we've gone through thus far, if you've been following the other series. Now, 
what is incredible is because the phylactery in essence on the forehead, as I said, it's covering the third eye region, but it also creates the area in which the penetration takes place for the birthing, the piercing into this world. But as he pierces into this world, he goes right back into a box, a 40 vessel. You know what I mean? And there it is. Now, as you know, that's called the all spark, right? And which you should associate with CERN, uh, their God particle, in which I feel I appropriately dubbed it when they first announced they had found this thing, I called it a spirit brick. All right, that would be the ultimate essence, the smallest particulate of material being that his spiritual being is connected to. In other words, their God particle. Of course, this is what's going to be infused into the material construct, a.k.a. the 40 cube length width height and of course once he enters in the recognition of time so what I find amazing here is some words with Jesus Christ and let's get back to the connection here with the third eye region being covered by the phylactery but then New York City is not at the 30th parallel like the pyramids of Giza are so I'm calling that the third eye region. But New York City, as you see here, where it's piercing through, is at the 40th parallel. 40th parallel, right smack dab on the money. Pun intended. Yeah. Whose number's 40? That would be Inky. Right? I said because it's... Inky's really the equivalent of eight, as it was times five, man, and then five times eight is 40. All right? So the 40 is a representation of that ceiling period in the connection with the time. Just a little under 40,000 years. So what's remarkable is that New York City is sporting exactly the 40th parallel which is Inky's number, all right? Which, when I said 40, you get 4D, and then reference with the cube in the box, as we've already gone over it, okay? Now, here's where you should begin to start seeing how intense the spirit sight is that the spirit of truth will offer, and that really all things are in place. All things are in place, so... We got the phylactery in location of the third eye. But if I'm telling you that phylactery also represents the 40 vessel, that cube, that box, the Iron Maiden in which he's going into, then am I wrong? Because I'm telling you it, it's covering the third eye region. That's the 30th. It's not at the 40th. Well, it is. They have broadened their phylacteries listen to this not only listen to this but listen to the chapter it's chapter 23 now that's the 23 enigma in association with this genetic manipulation that results in basically the gene pool in which this body can be formed out of to make the vessel, which you see being symbolized in essence of the womb, but also in essence of the particle, the spirit brick that's going to go into it. So this is chapter 23, the book of Matthew. And what's going to be incredible is that it's going to be verse 5, where it really comes together. So as I said, you know, 8 times 5 is 40. And then we're at the 40th parallel at New York City, right here in the imagery. And then, of course, everything that I've already told you. So I'm supported right now. And you're going to see the support really come together here. It's going to be an audio outage.
the marks of a Pharisee. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even christ and all are your brethren and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven neither be ye called masters for one is your master even christ but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant and whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted i've got another few verses i'd like to read but i'd really like you to absorb what you're seeing here. They make broad their phylacteries. So we, as we see, the phylactery has broadened not only to cover up the spiritual sight and representation of the third eye region, and of course in representation of the sealing and binding of those that rose that wicked spirit into their supposed enlightenment and then after they lived and died a physical life were sealed away broad their phylacteries and then i'm telling you that the symbolism for the cube in the head and representation of the womb symbolism for columbia on the top of the white house is a representation for the fruit of the womb the apple of his eye and the location of the Big Apple, New York City. The broad way at the 40th parallel. The phylactery has been broadened. Notice verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne. Have you ever heard the expression beast of burden and then the expression bind these heavy burdens which in essence is so many things on different varying levels it's to those that are being deceived and burdens are being heaped atop their back like asses like donkeys right now think New York City, five boroughs, district. In other words, asses, donkeys. Don't you see that Jesus knows what he's talking about? And when Jesus spoke to the multitude in those times gone by, that you're a part of that multitude today, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He speaks to the multitude eternally. And he is most definitely speaking to the multitude of today in which the very situation in which he's quoting is happening. Everything is there. 
the heavy burdens, even in symbolism, of the five burrows, beast of burden district. Now you would have to think how this evolves back from the semblance of the fallen Anunnaki and then of course their descendants. Because it was a very grievous burden that was bound upon them as well that resulted in their sealing in multiple ways. And then we see that people are being tricked to carry these same chains and the ball of iron attached to it. That eight bale, eight ball of iron. A very grievous burden to bear. They make broad their phylacteries. This is going to be Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there. Because straight is the way, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. The broad way. Apollyon is the destroyer in reference of the semblance of Enki, that lord of the underworld, lord of the earth, lord of the flowing waters. Apollyon, the destroyer. So the destruction, as I said, is the piercing as it's coming through, being symbolized now in a reenactment of the ancient seeding, in which we know is that supposed stone or that star that fell from heaven. It's a reenactment of the original penetration. That penetration has come to fruition. It's reached the gestation period of birth. And then now you see the destruction is going to come from it. The destroyer. Does that make any sense to you? When you would compare what I've told you about Inky being sealed away in a cube? And you can check that and research that. Think about all the changes <laughs> of the <laughs> that was a text message that came through and I thought that I had the volume turned all the way down and instead it was the all the way down to the vibration feature which is going to make a funky noise which many people are going to want to believe is some sort of demons well you do that it's their own technology okay you you know it's it's Verizon is your demon then okay and that probably isn't too far from the uh, actuality of a great analogy, if you will. So, I just can't, I, I just can't put it really into words how taken back I am. And uh, like I said, if I would have had this image or even thought about it or even put it together, I did, I've even seen the Transformers movie, but didn't, I didn't know about the cube stuff then, you know what I mean? I'd heard people talking about it, but didn't really, you know, know what it meant. But man, I mean, as you can see, uh, I think through the spirit of truth, uh, I've displayed that the spirit knows what it means. And it's that very same spirit right there with Jesus Christ that you saw Jesus speaking in the Bible to the multitude of our time, even now, telling you exactly what's up. And of course, what's going down. I'll be back.